An auditorium has 10 seats in the first row, 14 in the second, 18 in the third and so on. The auditorium has a total of 18 rows. How many seats are there in total? If you don't understand the problem at first sight, try drawing a rough sketch. If this is the stage, they have told us that the first row has 10 seats, the second has 14, the third has 18 and so on. And there are 18 rows in all. This is nothing but an arithmetic sequence. The difference between any two continuous rows is constant. The sequence will be 10, 14, 18 and so on. This is an AP. We have been asked for the total number of seats in the auditorium. It means we have been asked for the sum of the sequence. What is the sum of the terms of an AP? It will be n over 2 multiplied by first term plus the last term. Here n will be the last term number. What is the first term? We call it a and here it's 10. And how do we find the last term? There are 18 rows. The nth term of an AP is given by a plus n minus 1 times d. To find the last term, we just substitute 18 in place of n. We get the last term as 78. We have n, the first term and the last term. With this, we can easily find the sum. n over 2 will be 18 over 2. The first term is 10 and the last one is 78. This bracket will equal 10 plus 78. This is n over 2 and this is first term plus the last term. Solving this gives us 792. There are 792 seats in the auditorium. Let's quickly review what we did. Based on the arrangement of the number of seats, we realize that it is an arithmetic progression. As we were asked for the number of seats, we were indirectly asked to find the sum of this AP with 18 terms. And using the formula for the sum of terms in an AP, we calculated the number of seats. Here's another interesting problem. The sequence is given to us as 4 raised to n. And we are told that the 16th term of this sequence is this big number. Is this true or false? What do you think? Don't take a random guess. Think an answer. Okay, if you actually tried to calculate 4 raised to 16, you would have stopped midway, I'm sure. The number will be huge. So how do we know if this is true or false? Okay, let's try to find the first few terms of the sequence. The first term is 4 raised to 1, that equals 4. The second term is 4 raised to 2 and that equals 16. We still can't be sure about whether this is true or false. Ok, so the third term is 4 raised to 3, that equals 64. Um, still no clue? The fourth term is 4 raised to 4, 256. Now maybe we are getting closer. Did you get it? Let's solve for two more terms and you will surely get a hint. The fifth term is 1024 and the sixth one is 4096. Now can you say if the answer is true or false? Come on, you should get it now. Look at the unit digits of every term. It's either 4 or 6. 4, 6, 4, 6, 4, 6 and so on. No matter what the power of 4 is, the unit's digit will either be 4 or 6. This answer is definitely false. What about the sequence 3 raised to n? Does it also have a cyclical pattern in its unit's digits? The first four terms are 3, 9, 27 and 81. And these are the next four terms. Do you see a pattern? Yes. A pattern of 3, 9, 7, 1. Similarly, for 7 raised to n, the pattern of digits in the unit's place will be 7, 9, 
3 and 1. There are a couple of more things we can deduce from this. We can say that even powers of 4 have 6 as the units digit and odd powers have 4 as the units digit. If we asked for the units digit of 3 raised to 36, we can be sure it's 1. If it is of the form 3 raised to 4n, then the units digit will be 1. So whenever you're asked for the large exponent of a number, it will probably pertain to this concept.